Welcome everybody. Now back to the webinar Class Trading Strategies. My name Stefan Friedrichowski. Just call me Stefan. That's uh, absolutely okay. You see already my email address so you can reach me if you have any further questions. Don't hesitate to get in touch with me. And thanks to Argus FX that we have the webinar and yeah I have to apologize for yesterday's uh, interruption due to technical issues. I keep my fingers crossed that uh, today everything will went well. Uh, so hopefully, but now I have a backup system here directly in, uh, next to me. So in case we have issues, um, just wait two or three minutes, uh, then I can come back again. Well, um, today's topic um, yeah, is class trading strategies and that is mainly divided in two parts. One part is meant to, um, to introduce the concept of class trading and I will introduce that kind of concept uh, on the ducks uh, on a daily basis. And by the way, um, what I show you there um, might be of interest just for your normal trading as well. If you like to trade the ducks, then we will set up some rules um, which are profitable or give you a certain direction for your trades. So um, just to establish an edge, a probability advantage for your normal trading within the ducks. So that is the first part of uh, class trading uh, where I want to introduce the concept and the basic ideas and the more or less second part is then to move that strategy forward to forex pairs uh, in total to 20 forex pairs which can be traded with that kind of concept that will finally be done automatically and I will I want to share with you uh, all the performance data um, some screenshots some ideas and uh, some key figures of that strategy as well which can be finally um, followed via the Argonaut of Argus FX. Um, not uh, to forget to mention the so-called risk warning as uh, every time in those kind of webinars. So whatever you trade, you do it on your own risk. And um, but that you know, and I think I don't have to explain it in more detail. Okay, let's uh, directly start with uh, um, first of all with my person because uh, there are so many new people here around uh, who might not know me up to now so just in brief I'm 50 years old and I live in Germany uh, close to Dresden yeah my background is uh, physics I have a PhD in physics and uh, that is uh, something um, yeah, I only mention because that uh, has to do with my trading style and my personal view on trading at all. So I trade now since more than 20 years and uh, since the uh, last five, four, four years uh, it's my full-time job to do that kind of business and my style of trading is uh, mathematically uh, driven, so it's more or less um, algo trading, robot trading, however you call that. Um, so finally, I do all my strategies via expert advisors, and those expert advisors are programmed by Peter Müller from Austria, um, who is uh, the expert for expert advisors. So it's very good to have him on board as well. So. Finally, everything runs with robots, so no human impact, no psychological uh, view on my last trading results and so on and so on. Yeah, since more than one year now, or since about one year, uh, I have a close cooperation with Argus FX and it's a pleasure for me to um, to cooperate uh, with Argus and all the people within Argus. Um, it's uh, great people and I like that cooperation. But now to the basic idea of a uh, class trading concept. What does it mean? It's, um, the best is that I start with a principle statement of that kind of concept and this principle statement is simply that markets have different faces. What does it mean? 
maybe you all agree just uh, reading that single sentence yes markets have indeed different faces but what is the consequence the consequence then is that those different faces might need different trading setups so different rules maybe even to say oh there's a specific face I should not trade um, even that could be a very valuable information uh, not to trade you all know that from your own experience so but finally the challenge here is how to identify those different market faces and then finally find an appropriate setup for the specific um, face. Everything here is still under the um, even more general statement that all we do with trading is that we think things will repeat. So if we have similar situations in the past then price reaction should follow similar because um, everything repeats and we if we can identify those specific situations then we can let's call it hope uh, with some certain probability that the market will react the same than in the past everything is meant statistically that means um, for every single trade, nobody knows the, the result of the trade. If anybody would have that crystal ball, uh, of course, it would be nice. But um, so to foresee the result of a single trade uh, is absolutely impossible. And whoever is telling you, I know that, um, I think he's not right. But what we are always looking for is to have that probability advantage, that so-called edge that we have the, the knowledge that we with some certain probability know the result of a specific trade so but nevertheless for a single trade nobody knows the outcome of that trade the question is now how to identify those different market faces and um, there are some possible approaches for uh, that purpose and those approaches, um, they, they might be something um, related to an ATR, an average true range, for example. Or they might be related to an EMA. Or you will see um, in the following, I will use uh, in the first step an EMA slope, so the slope of that specific EMA. But in principle, all known indicators might be potential candidates in order to separate the different faces of a market. Whether they are doing their job or not, that has to be uh, investigated and finally then transformed to specific trading rules within those different faces. How does it look like? Let's, let's start with the ducks daily. What we have here, um, and I simply use in this case an Excel sheet or a ex picture of an Excel sheet uh, because I want to, to look to a long history of the DAX daily. Um, so we have 25 years history within the chart and the blue line is the close value um, of the DAX for the last 24 years or 25 years. And you know, and you can see all the ups and downs of the DAX for the last 20 years and um, it's always easy to identify um, now when was the best point to enter short trade and long trade and so on and so on. But that's a different story. Uh, that is a knowledge of the past which um, sometimes even might uh, result that trading appears very easy but all of you know trading is not that easy because we don't know the future we know the history within the chart I have two additional lines and one additional line is simply an EMA in this case it's an EMA uh, 200 and um, 
clearly you see the typical behavior of an EMA. Um, right now I would not really care about the uh, period of that EMA, but there's another indicator within my chart, and that indicator is the ATR, the average true range, on a period, in this case, uh, to have everything quite slow, uh, and that we can really look uh, in one image to 25 years, then in this case it is an ATR 120, with a period 120. What is different to the normal uh, view on ATR is that I calculated that ATR in percent, and simple reason is, um, of course, right now we have a DAX value of 10,000, and we have uh, ATRs in the, the order of 100, 150, or even 200. Uh, looking back to the history, when the DAX has been at 2,000, uh, we would never, or more or less never, have had an, um, EM, an ATR at, of uh, 200 points. So it's better to have this on a percentage, percentage base. So now, looking to the chart, we can try already to have a first view what I mean with different faces or different classes, uh, finally. So, looking here, let's start with uh, those high values of ATR, and then you realize high values of ATR might correspond to strong downwards movement of the ducks. At least um, I can find some examples within the chart which would prove that statement. Finally, we will realize it's not that easy, and um, but that is always a difference between just looking and then finally doing the analysis, for example, via uh, Excel. Let's have another view here. We, we see there are um, sometimes periods of strong long behavior, strong increase of the ducks, and looking once again to um, the ATR for those strong movements within the ducks to the north, then we realize maybe, oh, there are periods with a quite low value of the ATR. And now you see already this kind of com combinations. Because I mentioned already that I will finally go not for the EMA itself, I will go to the first der derivative of uh, the EMA, so what uh, only means I look for the slope of the EMA. Then we can realize that if we have strong upward, upward trends, and um, that we have um, the low values for the ATR, uh, then it might be um, a good chance for entering long trades. Um, there's some guy just telling me that uh, there's a problem with the um, with my voice or with the tone, and I hope it's only a single one. On my con control screen, everything looks fine, so I hope that you can still hear me and it's only a single event at one participant. So we see already that we might be able to separate different indicator values to different typical behavior of the ducks, meaning it's going more long or it's going more short, so that we can foresee that we have um, an increase in DAX values or a decrease in DAX values. So the task now is to really separate those um, kind of things. But doing that kind of job, uh, let's first um, go back to the basics of uh, that kind of process. And the basics um, means here that we have finally two indicators, as already in the last chart, ATR and EMA slope, but of course uh, we can figure out what period might be best for ATR, what period might be best for the EMA. And 
Um, in this first step, which you can later uh, simply use for your daily trading of DAX, um, I only want to have three classes uh, for each indicator. What does it mean? I want to have something like low, medium and high. If you think about this ATR, it's more or less uh, telling you what I mean here. A low values ATR, medium values of ATR and high values of ATR. For EMA slope, um, then it will turn a little bit uh, out a little bit different like um, negative values, values close to zero and um, positive values or high positive values, something like that, which I describe right now only by wording needs finally a clear definition and I will show you how I come to those kind of uh, definitions because we need separate uh, separators, real values which distinguish between those three classes, low, medium and high. This separation will be done, and now that sounds very complicated uh, math, but it's uh, not that complicated, you will see it uh, later in my Excel sheet. This separation will be done by the normalization of the distribution of the indicator values. So it sounds complicated, but what does it mean? You see already that I want to have three classes finally, low, medium and high, and what I want is that I have in every class the same number of members. So if I have 6,000 uh, data points, then I want to have 2,000 within the low class, 2,000 in the medium class and 2,000 in the high value class. This can be done uh, via Excel quite uh, easily and I will show you how that works. Finally, that means if I have three classes for the ATR values and three classes for the EMA slope, we will end up uh, with a total nine classes. And then the question is, how to trade those nine classes? We know how a class is defined and then the question is going long, no trade, short, something like that. So that is finally the question. Um, we have to answer. So to have the, that answer already a little bit visualized here, um, I use a table and it's only the summary of uh, the last page. So we have ATR values low, medium, high, slope EMA low, medium, high and then we want to identify something like within that table. For example, if we have high values of ATR and uh, we have negative, that stands for low slope values, then that might be a good chance for short rates. Maybe the same is valid for medium ATA, uh, ATR values and um, an extremely low slope. Low means low slope means in this case negative. So already um, a decrease within the DAX values. And maybe we have other different classes like here, and even we have those classes like here in yellow um, that is that we should. Um, not open a trade at all, and that might be the case for those um, uh, cells here. But there's a big question mark, um, and don't take that uh, table serious, you will later see how that table really looks like. But now let's go directly into an Excel sheet um, in order to illustrate how the process uh, is done. And before we go to all the pictures, just um, that you know how the Excel sheet works. Um, and by the way, if you want, I can send you uh, those Excel sheets uh, if you like. Just send me an email and um, I will make sure that you get um, those Excel sheets. So let's go a little bit downwards first, because just in order to, um, to describe how this Excel sheet works. So we have um, the first couple of um, um, 
columns um, describe the ducts itself and then we calculate in this case the, the two range first that is just uh, this percentage value and then we do the averaging um, over 120 um, candles and that would finally mean that we have an ATR 120 and since I do everything um, um, percentage-wise uh, this ATR value is still in percent. Then we calculate the EMA with a, a standard formula, formula to calculate EMA values uh, within Excel and what I have done here um, only because of um, better pictures um, so I, I smooth that EMA value once again and that smoothing um, is simply done um, by uh, by not looking uh, normally the EMA slope would be defined just by uh, this value minus the one of the previous candle in this case what I did is um, I look back at 10 candles but that is it's, that is only for uh, smoothing the values uh, once again and then we will have uh, better pictures so it's more for illustration purpose only here and then you see already that in the next two columns in those two there's already written class class ATR class slope and you see already numbers like 0, 1 and if I move around a little bit uh, then we come to even other numbers like class 2, 1 and so on. So we have three numbers 0, 1 and 2. Everything stands for medium, uh, low, medium and high and you see that uh, this kind of separation is done by comparison to those two values. But how do I derive those separator values? Those separator values, and uh, you may um, still have in mind, uh, and it's easier for to demonstrate that with the ATR values. So we, whenever this um, the ATR value here is below the first separator, then the class is identified uh, or assigned with a zero. And we will have values of 2 if we exceed the second separator. So if we have values higher, then this class is assigned with a label 2. And if we have numbers in between, then um, the class value is uh, simply, there we have a 1. Let's check it. Oops. Um, there's one, there's one. Um, <clears throat> that when we have values in between, then we have those classes assigned with one, just uh, for comparison. So here the ATR value is 1.27, and this falls in between those two separators, and therefore we have um, this candle assigned with the class number one. But how do I derive those separators here? Um, those two separators um, have been calculated um, by the following formula. Um, what I did is I take all those values of ATR values and I do it here once again and copy those values into an, another Excel sheet. And this is now then um, pasted here and what we see then is the same graph than before when we looked to uh, the yellow line within the tax graph. But what we do now is simply we order them. We order those values uh, by number and then we have what I typically call the so-called pseudo-histogram. And now the task is quite easy. If we have 6,500 data, then at line number 2,000, 
166, we have exactly the separator value that we have one third of all our data within the low class. And then we look for the next separator, which we, then we would have to look for line number 4333. And we can have the next value being the upper separator. And that means finally we have the same number of members in the lower, in the middle and in the high class. And that is done by normalization of the distribution. What, what sounds complicated is uh, in practice quite easy. And going that way we do the same job for the EMA slope. And then we have all the numbers for our different classes. Finally, what I did here is I want to have a class ID, a real identification number of a specific class. And this is now quite simple. Um, you see the formula that we simply add the class ATR value plus class slope value times three, times three because we have three different classes. So that's all. And then we have all our separation done and we have different numbers for different candles. What I did next now is simply I look for the change. So this is simply the percentage change of the DAX value uh, from one close to the next close. And the job is now sorting all those values, so those changes, to a specific class. We know the class here and therefore we can have within the following columns here, let me move first downwards, so if we know that for in this case we have class number four, then this change should fall and be assigned to this column because we have here all the columns, all the values with class number four. And that is now quite nice because now we can sum up um, all those values and then we have those values here. Finally what we do is we add all those changes for a specific class and then we can do um, something like equity lines. Let's have a look. But first, let's have a look on how this class distribution now works. Within that graph, I have those different classes. That's once again those 25 years. Um, and we have in blue the tax value. And um, all the other lines belong to the right uh, y axis and we have in yellow the classes of ATR and in um, red all the classes of, uh, of the EMA slope and in green the final identification, the class ID of a specific um, value. Just a second. So now I'm back. I still have a little bit of cold, and therefore I have to mute my microphone before doing the next steps in order to not wake you up. Um, so, and especially you remember this, this middle range here in the DAX value where we have that strong falling down. Yeah, now we see all those numbers fall in one class, and you um, uh, think already about, hey, that might be a good chance for short trades. But let's look more in detail to that. And this is meant by this little picture here. Um, and what I did here, we have, let's call it the equity line of a single class. Let's start with the class zero. This class is zero. Um, which would be low values ATR and um, I forgot we looked later to the summary um, and then we have added up all the changes of 
the daily change of the DAX falling into class number zero. <clears throat> Let's move directly to the end. Um, this is um, exactly those potential short rate uh, candidates with high values ATR and extremely low uh, EMA slope values. But let's first have the better view on the best ones. And the best ones are those which have a complete to um, positive behavior because then a long trade would uh, be quite profitable. So we would decide something like, hey, class number zero should be long traded, class number three should be long traded, and class number seven should be long traded as well. And so on and so on. And then we can do with those selection process, we can just select those classes where we know what kind of trade direction we should go for. And then we would have something like this final equity line. And the translation to the classes would look like this one. And before you make a screenshot of uh, that, um, I will show you a better example. But this is once again the same than the basic idea that we can assign to every class um, slopes, EMA slopes, very positive, more or less flat or high minus. Then we can assign those kind of classes with long trades, do nothing, or short trades. But I mentioned I have played a little bit around with EMA slopes. Uh, and ATR values or EMA periods, and let me show you directly um, an even better result. So now, uh, what I did here is I did everything with an EMA 50, and I changed the ATR to um, 22 days, or more or less exactly one month. And you see immediately, because all the pictures look a little bit uh, the same, you can see in this middle, picture, middle graph here, once again, um, what seems to be attractive and at what, for which classes we should not trade. Let's start with a very strange behavior of this brown line, class number four. That goes more or less only to the south. Remember, we add up all the changes of which fall into the class number four. And since all the changes add up to a decreasing line, this finally simply means, hey, we should, we should look for short trades within the class number four. We have other classes for long trades, and we have classes more or less doing nothing um, because we don't find profitable chances. Finally, this adds up, by the way, um, to <clears throat> this graph here, uh, which is even more smooth, and that would be the final equity line, only with the rule of which class do we have, and then going for long, going for do nothing, or going for short rate. And the final table looks like this one here, and now it's time for a screenshot, if you don't mind. Um, and we know exactly which class should be traded in which way. And we have only one class where we find very good chances for uh, short trades, and that is the medium-medium class. So. Uh, if the slope of the EMA is more or less flat and ATR values are medium. And we have other classes um, which are labeled in green where we can look for long trades or um, for class number 0, uh, 3, 1 and 7. So still this is mm, just a rule and what you can do with you, for your own trading, simply with that table is, hey, you, you have a bias. What trade direction should I go for? Or should I better not to trade? 
And that is already done only with that uh, simple um, Excel sheet and that we have an easy setup which you can use for your normal trading of the DAX. What you finally would need, and by the way, you can have uh, this Excel sheet if you want. I will send it around. Um, of course, you need those separator values like those um, in order to identify in which class are we today. And the comparison would be simple. Hey, I uh, look for the ATR value, looking for the class. I look for the slope of the uh, EMA and looking in, um, in which class do I uh, enter. And then we finally know the class ID number and this goes directly into the table and we have those um, values of 0, 1, up to 8, those different classes and then we can identify what is the preferred trade direction or even not to trade. So that is the basic concept of class trading because we have identified the different market phases via two indicators, one ATR and the other one the EMA slope. Those define the specific market phase and we have already translated those different phases into preferred trade directions. That helps already a lot. We have not a trading setup like um, yeah, enter long, uh, stop loss 1.3% and uh, we use a risk reward ratio maybe of, of 4. No, what we have done here up to now is only that we have preferred trading direction and you can use that kind of information uh, in order to identify let's call it a real trade, a trade with a stop loss, with a um, and with a take profit. Otherwise, if you would simply only follow the table, this would mean you don't have a stop loss and I never recommend um, trades without a stop loss. So that's for now the introduction via um, the DAX daily. But let's bring that kind of concept forward and uh, doing it on um, smaller time frames, doing it on Forex. Forex has always the advantage that we have lots of Forex pairs, uh, so we can diversify our trading results uh, quite impressively. And that is done in the following um, um, section of my talk here. So we use a different indicator now. And the indicator of choice now is simply the rate of change. Um, ROC. So what I measure here, or what is the rate of change? You compare, for example, the close value of today or this candle, uh, because finally this will run on M5 uh, candles. So the close value of the current candle compared with the close value one candle before. Then this would be the rate of change one. The rate of change um, three would mean close value of today and you go back three candles um, so that it would be rate of change uh, three. So that will be our indicator of choice and um, what we in use is that we use three different rate of changes like rate of change one, rate of change uh, 16 and rate of change um, 64, 64 or 65, something like that. So that we have different histories within our rate of change. And if you translate already the concept, then you can try to uh, follow the idea that those different rate of change with changes with different histories will create something like a market situation. For example, if everything is strong positive, then this would identify an upwards trend. 
if the weight of change 1, weight of change 5 and weight of change 60, all values are positive, then of course we must be in a very steep increase of our specific underlying. In this case, now I finally use not three subclasses like in my example before, I use five classes and having three indicators, each of them with five um, values, then I end up with 125 classes. You might think, wow, 125 classes, that's a lot. Yeah, but keep in mind, um, if we have M5 data, then in total we have, looking for 10 years history, we have 800,000 uh, candles. And those 800,000 candles then being assigned to a little bit more than 100 classes, Hmm. that's still a huge number of uh, candles within each class. So, um, so statistics are still valid uh, and we, we cannot use the same kind of concept example, for example, for the DAX daily, because then we would have two less data within one given class. But now we have still enough data within a given class and we can analyze each class separately and really find trading rules with stop loss and take profit and by the way what I do here always um, every trade gets the maximum trade duration or in other words every trade gets a time stop. By analyzing each class and looking for a trading rule for with those numbers stop loss take profit and so on then I always look for extreme robust robust um, strategies and what I mean here is that I, if I move around with my parameters like stop loss or take profit and in this case I move around up to 20% in both directions, then this single strategy for, um, for a specific class should still be absolutely profitable and uh, so this is my um, way how I try to get robust um, sub strategies and this yeah um, helps me a lot not to to overfit to over optimize uh, strategies. Just have a look um, in Excel how something like that would look like and uh, here I have uh, only for simplicity reason I uh, use uh, H1 data. I have those values for uh, the change and let me go downwards so then you can see how it works here. Um, I should zoom a little bit here. Um, and it's quite simple, you see that is the uh, rate of change 1 and rate of change 9 and rate of change 64, uh, 65, is it? Um, so that is those values and then same procedure, um, then introduced already with the ducks. I have threshold values uh, for, um, in order to identify the subclass for every indicator. Um, this is done once again via this normalization process and then I can assign class uh, numbers and finally this class ID. Um, in this case only for um, showing those results I went back to only three classes and to see something like this here um, all the candles and I have only look here for a small um, period, uh, only 400 candles within those thousands of candles uh, and you see that we have different classes at different points. Um, there's one question. Um, the question was why do we have 125 uh, final classes? So, um, not in this picture, in this picture it's once again, once again uh, only 27 different classes because I use only two separators which means I have finally three in one class. 
and in my in this case it um, multiplies to simply three times three times three, and therefore we have twenty three class uh, twenty seven classes, and if I go to the final concept with um, those five subclasses per indicator, then this goes five times five times five, so it would uh, multiply to 125 different classes. So I don't use, well, like I uh, mentioned in your question, I don't use five different rate of changes, no, three different rate of changes, like in this example, but with five subclasses, and therefore it's five times five times five. Well, so that is how it looks like in principle, and um, now let's directly move into live action. Live action means um, let's move, let's have a look into uh, this trading account already, and um, this trading account is um, this one here, and we have um, for more than three months now we run that strategy, and you see uh, I just enlarge. Uh, a few uh, charts like this one here, and you see all the lines that have been passed trades, and there are still a lot of trades right now open, um, and uh, you see there are yeah, positive trades, negative trades, um, everything is within, uh, everything is possible, but in principle uh, we have something which is quite uh, attractive, and you will see the results uh, in a second. But just one other example here, with a little bit more uh, negative trades uh, within the chart. So you see a lot of trades, and you cannot now name every trade. I can name them with a class ID, but to easily identify what is trading rule in terms of, hey, this is a, a trend following uh, rule, this is a reversal rule of whatever name you have for the specific class, um, that cannot be done anymore. Um, but we see that we have a lot of trades within this account. Um, to see a little bit more of the results, um, I switch here to um, the analysis of that account, this demo account now running since three months, and uh, you see that we started with a big move upwards, and we went downwards, and now we went upwards once again. And just to have a, um, an impression of how this strategy runs, so we have 25 trades a day, more or less one trade per hour, um, and the trade duration. Um, the trade duration is typically, or in average, uh, 37 hours in this case. So a lot of trades, um, but it works well. Uh, within um, the history we have, that is a live history in a demo account up to now, and um, but of course we have more. We have not only um, this uh, history in a demo account, of course, we have um, the history as well within, um, and you, I will show you in a minute, um, of the complete 10 years. Originally, um, that uh, strategy has been developed simply for wealth management, and the target has been to have an account size of 100K. Um, but what I finally did now, um, it is possible to downscale uh, that strategy a little bit, um, and downscaling in this case means we can go down to accounts of 15k um, and can trade uh, the strategy still quite um, quite good and profitable. <clears throat> so, what what does it mean this downscaling um, process? Remember that everybody knows that we cannot trade with smaller lot sizes than 0 0.01 lot. Um, that's impossible. Uh, we have no chance with our brokers to have smaller trades, because otherwise then this down 
scaling process for, for, from, from a 100k account to a 15k account would be easy. Um, just uh, divide every lot size with a specific factor of about uh, six. But now having this limit in mind of 0.01 lot for, uh, being the minimum lot size for a single trade, yeah, then we have to find a threshold. Because we, we have a um, principal risk per trade um, within our strategy. Every trade is traded with the same risk uh, per trade. And going down with the um, account size means the, this risk per trade goes down as well. And then finally we have to reject some trades, to not trade some trades, because otherwise we, um, we, we would need point, for example, point zero zero eight lots, we cannot trade this, and going up to this point zero one would mean the risk per trade would be too high, um, and therefore we have to reject that trade. So finally the task means to find the compromise between profitability and account size. And I just want to show you the results, and by the way, then you can show the uh, entire um, equity curve of uh, this strategy as well. And uh, this is done here. And here we have this equity line of class trading M5 uh, for an account size of 100,000 euro. In this case, the risk per trade would be 118 euros, and so on and so on. And I will show you, or I will mention the, the key figures like um, monthly um, growth and so on uh, later once again. But this Excel sheet now uh, helps me to figure out what happens with my trading results when I go down with this account size. Let's go down directly to the account size of, um, of choice and then after a few seconds when this Excel sheet has lots of uh, lines, therefore it, it, it takes a while um, to recalculate here everything. Um, so give it um, a few minutes and then um, the profitability went down and you see when I go here that the lot size for um, is always calculated and in case we have values below 0 0.01 then those trades are rejected so the final lot size is zero there's no trade if we have values above 0 0.012 then we would trade that specific uh, trade with 0 0.01 so this finally means that uh, going down with the account size and applying always the same rules, then um, there will be less trades um, and a little bit less profitability. And this can be um, directly shown in one single graph. Just focus your eye on the blue line. So if we would have an account size of 100k, then we would have a monthly growth of a little bit above 7% uh, within uh, more than 10 years uh, history. And going down with the account size, um, the monthly growth uh, went down as well. And um, simply because we take out a lot of trades and uh, we, yeah, we have less smoothing diversification um, through all those uh, forex trades and what I've here finally decided that uh, I still want to have one, uh, two, uh, two third um, of my original um, uh, monthly growth and therefore I ended up with 15 uh, with a 15k account and that still has a profitability of um, 5% which is very good because it's a monthly value. So in summary what does it mean? In summary we have those the following key figures of this um, 
a strategy. So for an account size of uh, 15K, then we have a risk per trade of a little bit less than 18 uh, euros. We allow a maximum drawdown of 50% within that account. And then we have a final um, average monthly growth um, of a little bit above 5%. Of course, I have to mention, um, as always, uh, historical considerations of uh, trading strategy are by no way any guarantee for the future behavior. But we have good evidence uh, that we can see those results um, once again, but once no guarantee. So um, before going to the final uh, statement here, um, we have a good strategy already, and um, it was possible going from this uh, wealth management accounts of um, um, from 100k account because that was the original target value <coughs> for for that uh, strategy. Um, it was possible to downscale it at least to 15, uh, 15k. Um, and uh, there's one good question right now. Uh, do all the calculations include uh, spreads, commission, and swaps? Absolutely, answer is yes. And um, who knows me a little bit longer that, um, that I have changed all the spread considerations to a much more pessimistic view. So I use, uh, for example, um, the most prominent example is always um, Euro US dollar. For Euro US dollar, I use a spread of 1.6 bips. In case, for example, um, Euro Japanese yen, I use 2.9 bips as a spread. And um, I use comm commissions uh, as typical uh, used at Hagos FX. The swap costs are incorporated as well. Um, not directly, so for each uh, specific pair um, individually, um, it's an average value which is used for all forex pairs uh, over the complete um, history. So that is uh, how swaps are um, incorporated. Swaps are not that important for this kind of strategy because um, the maximum trade duration is only uh, one and a half day about. Um, okay, so we have a quite good new concept and we will start this strategy in about two weeks. Uh, and you can follow this uh, class trading and five strategies via the Argonaut uh, platform of uh, Argos FX. And uh, yeah, so let me recap what we have done within the webinar. You have seen already a DAX uh, strategy just rule based on nine different classes based on EMA and ATR. Um, and you can use already that kind of table for your individual trading um, with the DAX and uh, there's now a probability advantage um, identifying the right market phase and then looking for the right trading possibility long, short or uh, in just uh, flat. And um, we have moved forward that kind of concept to forex pairs uh, and what we do here is, once again, we have um, different market phases being identified by um, the rate of change. And that gives us the opportunity to have specific classes and specific trading rules for each of those uh, classes. So we have done a historical uh, consideration over more than 10 years, and we have now a uh, little bit more than three months uh, back test results uh, for a demo account. Uh, that is also for testing the EA, the expert advisor functionality. So everything went smooth and um, absolutely convinced about uh, that strategy right now. So if you don't want to miss the start, um, then, um, yeah, um, then 
uh, you can send me an email uh, and I will make sure that you exactly know when to start and how to start in, and I can help you with the Argonal platform as well. So um, that is uh, no problem. You might realize my email address and by the way I have uploaded uh, all those pages here already so you can download them directly if you want. Um, there's uh, within uh, the control panel you will find uh, all the slides as PDF document. Finally, if you have any questions just send me an email or you can contact Argus uh, as well and yeah, um, you know how to reach me and I hope that you find a good way here um, that uh, you enjoyed that kind of concept and that you can follow it um, that concept and that trading strategy via Argona platform. So that's for now. Um, thank you very much for participating in this um, this webinar even with a delay of 24 hours because the technical issues of yesterday but today everything went well um, and uh, that's uh, very good. Okay, thank you very much and have a nice weekend. Uh, not weekend, <laughs> evening. Evening comes first and weekend comes later. Okay, bye-bye.